Normally, we assume things work somehow like this. If I am a person who thinks of myself as confident, then I act confidently as a result of that. But according to a theory called self-perception theory, the opposite is also true. Daryl Ben, the researcher behind self-perception theory, says that we observe our behavior and only then we reach conclusions about who we are and what we believe. We form our attitudes based on our behavior. For example, wow, I just ate two plates of spaghetti and a dessert. I guess I must have been hungrier than I thought I was. But how can you possibly be hungrier than you thought you were? This doesn't make sense, unless you explain it with self-perception theory. It says that we see our behavior and then we interpret it. We interpret our behavior in terms of our attitude. The same mechanism has been shown to work within terrorist organizations. New converts are pressured to comply with the existing social norms of the group. Social norms that advocate radical behaviors. And through their compliance, through the new converts' compliance, through their actions, they start to form more radical beliefs and more radical attitudes. Because their brain more or less thinks, I must be a radical person because I say and I do radical things. That's the brain's logic behind that. But in order to finish with a more uplifting topic, let's look at one last study that provides great proof for self-perception theory. Two researchers tested this theory with college undergraduates. They brought in 26 young men that were what researchers call heterosocially anxious. In other words, they were shy around women. So what the researchers did was that they set up a facade for them. These shy young men were asked to come in in order to take some kind of test. But when they arrived, the researchers told them, uh, we're sorry, uh, but we're running a little bit behind. Please take a seat in the waiting room for a little while. We'll come and get you as soon as we are ready. So the shy young men went into the waiting room. But they were not the only ones to wait there. The researchers had arranged for another person to be waiting. They had arranged for women to wait with them. To the young man, they pretended to be waiting in order to take the test. The same test that they were going to take, just like them. But in reality, this woman, she was part of the study and she had been instructed to start a conversation with this shy young man. And she was also instructed to express a lot of interest and excitement about what they were saying and about them and, and to laugh and just to be, have a nice conversation with them. So through this trick, the researchers kind of staged a positive experience for them, for the young man, a positive interaction with a female. Something which they were usually very anxious about. And after 12 minutes, the woman left. To the participant, to the shy young man, it seemed as if it was her turn now to take the test for the experiment. And then another woman came in, and she as well, she was very interested in the shy young man. She was laughing with him, asking questions, again for 12 minutes. And with every one of the 26 shy young men who had participated in the study, the researchers staged six conversations like this each. So after more than an hour of having interesting, engaging conversations with women in the waiting room, the men were then brought in to take the test. The test that they thought was the real experiment. And then after the test they were thanked and asked again to come, to come again tomorrow. And on the next day, the researchers had the shy young man go through the exact same procedure again. They had six engaging conversations with the opposite sex, 12 minutes each. Of course, in reality, what the experimenters were interested in was what effect these, these conversations had on the people's, on the men's shyness, on their introvertedness. And it had radical effects. As self-perception theory would predict it, 
From these apparently successful interactions, the young man concluded, oh, I'm not that bad with women after all. I'm not that shy and awkward. And over the next six months, the young man became less and less anxious. Very often, these men, for the first time in their lives, started dating. They became more, they became more outgoing and less shy. These two days, these two hours, a little bit more than two hours, these 12 positive experiences with women started an upward spiral that eventually changed their lives. Because these changes lasted even after more than half a year, half a year later when the researchers went back to follow up with the men. This mechanism works in all different aspects of life. Also for us, we learn about ourselves and we judge us ourselves by the way we behave. This is self-perception theory.